his famous experiments on curare. And um, this is part of the lessons he gave uh, at the College of France, the leçons sur les substances toxiques et médicamenteuses, lessons on the effect of toxic and medicinal substances of uh, 1857. And uh, the main conclusion of um, uh, his uh, lectures was the idea that uh, one can use toxins in physiological research because um, uh, localization of toxic actions give the experimentalist authentic reagents of life, I quote. So the toxins have been uh, really in the work of Palmer, uh, an extraordinary tool to precisely dissect and analyze some critical structures which are present in the nervous system and is fully in the condition of uh, Louis Bernard. Now, after Louis Bernard came the understanding of the mode of action of curare, and uh, he discovered indeed that curare blocked the transmission between nerve and muscle, but at that time nothing was known about the chemistry of this transmission. And therefore the second concept which uh, I have to introduce that would have to know but as a date is the concept of chemical transmission, 1904. And this uh, concept was uh, produced by Elliot, who identified noradrenaline as uh, being the effect of the pathetic nervous system on this movement. And um, following this uh, uh, proposal, which was a theoretical proposal, to my opinion, there is not enough emphasis in the science today about concepts. They are essential. And this is a critical concept was, of course, the localization of um, uh, noradrenaline in the nervous system, the uh, coexistence of several other chemicals with noradrenaline and other noradrenaline, uh, which are all neurotransmitters, which can coexist, play a critical role in the transmission between the nerve and the muscle, or between neurons, and there are about, uh, as you know, hundreds of these uh, neurotransmitters. The uh, second aspect that uh, uh, Claude Bernard <coughs> was able to propose was uh, the fact that if some chemical substances are involved in the transmission of signals between nerve and muscle, then there should be molecule which recognize the neurotransmitter, which should be present in the muscle and cause the muscle to contract. This was the second very important concept in the neuroscience. In 1905, the concept of receptors for pharmacological agent, and the main actor of it was John Newport Longley, who, as you see here, using the fall, uh, for example, anesthetized fall on the left, which when injected by nicotine starts to contract. And uh, this is the consequence of the action of um, nicotine on some receptive substance depostulated in uh, 1906-1905, which is said is localized under the nerve terminal and mediate synaptic communication. This was proposed, confirmed by the testicular contacts. Now, acetylcholine is one of these uh, hundreds of neurotransmitters which were pursued by Elliot, but was, there was one there when uh, acetylcholine was chemically identified and synthesized by Bayer in 1867. But at that time, the substance existed, but nobody knew that he was playing a role of neurotransmitter. And again, it's Longley, who was at the origin 
Fabiana Raza Castacoli plays a key role in the uh, uh, transmission between Marvin Bassel and Henry Day, who uh, proposed that it was also efficient in the central nervous system, as you can see here on this uh, picture. Now, <coughs> we have everything uh, in hand for cholinergic transmission, which is the field of the Nakana. And cholinergic transmission involves the neurotransmitter, as typically, which is sensitized in the terminal, released in the synaptic flight, and then meets with two proteins, which have been at the heart of all the work done by Lambertella. One is the acidic receptor, which recognizes cyclone, according to l'anglais, and the other is a cyclone esterase, which degrade uh, <coughs> a cyclone, and which is a key molecule in the function of the nervous system and also in the way the organism and as you know, one of the most poisonous nerve gas, like sarin, so on, is acting at the level of the acetylcholinesterase. And as you shall see at the very end of my presentation of the scientific work of uh, uh, Palmer Taylor, has been a key molecule for uh, uh, studying the reversal of these toxic agents. And, uh, recent discovery of new compounds which are effi efficient in, in this respect. So the third concept I want to introduce here is in addition to the concept of receptor is the fact that uh, once the um, receptor is being bound by an agonist like nicotine then an ion channel opens. This was discovered by physiologists like Bernard Katz or John Nichols. And in one case, the channel is selective for cations, the other for uh, anions. And the, here is an excitatory receptor, here is an inhibitory receptor. Now, how does the communication between the uh, lying and binding sites and the channel take space? How does it take place? Well, the proposal that we made quite a while ago, at the time of uh, my thesis work and uh, the uh, model with Jacques Modo and uh, Jeffrey Smith was already mentioned by our chairman. But uh, the proposal I made in uh, my thesis work was that possibly an allosteric transition would be involved in this coupling between the acidic coin binding site and the ion channel. And therefore, that would exist uh, within the membrane oligomers like uh, the acidic nicotinic receptor. And uh, the question which was raised was uh, is there an allosteric mechanism for signal transduction of the synapse? One had to identify the nicotinic receptor. This was done using, again, toxins from sanguinum, electric organ of fish. And this is uh, the first view of the structure of a receptor uh, from the electric fish, from Electrophorus electricus, and here from torpedo. And the organization of this oligomeric molecule was somewhat bizarre. It was an heteropentamer with five subunits, two identical, and for different, this was the work of Arthur Carlin and Rafteri and others. And um, the molecule was further shown after its sequence uh, to be uh, composed of uh, an extracellular domain, a transmembrane domain, and a cytoplasmic domain. Now, again, question, is it an allosteric protein? <laughs> and, uh, I am now going to <coughs> discuss specifically after the introduction of this concept, the work done by uh, uh, Palmer and his uh, collaborators during the past uh, decades. And uh, uh, he has been concerned by these two 
molecule I mentioned already, the A series antireceptor. And uh, I am not going to give an extensive review of the several hundred of papers uh, he has been publishing for 120 or something like this, but try to select a few headlines, key points of uh, his most fascinating research on these two proteins. And um, uh, if I may say, things started quite early in the 70s, together with uh, Steve Sides in particular, about precisely the sites present on the nicotinic receptor I just mentioned. You remember the extra uh, uh, membrane domain, the synaptic domain, the, and the transmembrane domain. And the question was where are these sites for the neurotransmitter and the site for the channel located? Are they close to each other? So it would be a very close interaction, or are they far from each other? And uh, Palmer was able to measure using very sophisticated fluorescent energy transfer technique the distance between the acetylcholine binding sites on torpedo receptor here and uh, having them distant by about 40 angstrom. Remember that uh, the site between hemes the distance between hemes in hemoglobin is 30 angstrom. It's even better than with hemoglobin. And the distance between the site and the channel, about 60 angstrom. So clearly, we have a set of sites which create some kind of network, long distance network that have to communicate with each other to mediate the response of the postsynaptic membrane to acetylcholine. So there were many papers in around this interesting and major discovery, which concern the assembly and the lack of specificity of the nicotinic receptor. But these studies were improved and developed at a higher resolution, uh, in particular thanks to the <coughs> X-ray structure, and here in collaboration with Pascal Marchaud and Yves Gourds, who are present here, and uh, to further dissect using uh, the philosophy of Claude Bernard to localize the effect of substances, and in particular toxic substances, on the molecule now, that Claude Bernard ignored, of course. And uh, he used this uh, acetylcholine binding protein, which corresponds to the synaptic domain. You showed, uh, you saw the three domains of the nicotinic receptor. And this uh, is a very interesting uh, molecule, which was identified by Sigma, which is, I would say, part of the whole gene of uh, the nicotinic receptor, and uh, which is a pentamer as well, with sites at the boundary between subunits. And very important contribution where, for instance, I select uh, two of them, the uh, identification of uh, the local conformation of the acetylcholine binding site at the boundary between subunits, which was found to be different for agonists who create the response like nicotine, an antagonist which block the response like you are. So this is a very interesting picture, rare one, new one, uh, can be achieved with this uh, X-ray structure crystallography. Another interesting aspect was uh, the identification of um, the uh, uh, binding of uh, cobra toxin here that you can see, which um, not uh, unexpectedly, but one had to show that, uh, is binding like uh, these wings uh, at uh, the end of uh, uh, the uh, uh, 
molecule and uh, make this beautiful organization that you can see here. So this is, of course, one fast mention discovery, but in detail, of course, you have all the different uh, amino acid side chains which are involved in this binding and uh, how they can interact with the side which bind acid icon and so on and so forth. But one of the most fascinating discovery of uh, Palmer, I would say this is a really a founding uh, result of, uh, of Palmer, is the first primary structure of acetylcholine esterase, not receptor, esterase. And this is, of course, a very interesting uh, finding, uh, which has been quite difficult to obtain through the purification of uh, uh, Astaricon esterase rece receptor from Torpedo Californica. Early studies were done with electrophorus. This is a good choice because with um, this uh, uh, esterase from Torpedo Californica, he was able to uh, purify it in large amount to um, uh, sequence um, partially the uh, amino acid structure and um, uh, obtained uh, finally at the end, and this was done uh, by uh, the team of Sisman and uh, Silman, uh, the crystal structure. So here is the first uh, amino acid sequence data uh, of uh, which has been inferred from the cDNA of uh, acetylcholine esterase. And uh, as you may already see here, this was a very interesting partnership. <laughs> and a uh, very successful one, if I may say. And um, then uh, after that, of course, an uh, important set of uh, data were gathered and collected, like the genomic organization of the acyclinesterase gene, the, the um, alternative uh, um, mRNA processing and uh, a lot of studies on, uh, on the uh, muscle specific enhancers and the control of expression of, uh, of the esterase. So that was really, a, I must say, a founding discovery. And at the very end of my talk on the scientific part, you shall see another outcome of this discovery, which I keep silent now. So uh, having uh, uh, these data on the structure of the esterase, uh, then uh, there was a abundant, what I call structural pharmacology of um, the esterase, um, with uh, again uh, uh, Pascal and uh, Eve. And um, this is include the mechanism of action of the, uh, the um, uh, esterase on acetylcholine and where early on with Shelley Camp, I did not see her today, but maybe I see two more. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, actual uh, analysis of uh, uh, the um, catalytic mechanism uh, and uh, important information on uh, <laughs> the gorge and uh, the back door, which has also been investigated by uh, Sisman. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Joel uh, Group, uh, Joel Sisman and uh, Israel Sisman Group. But uh, very important information <coughs> that you can see here uh, mentioned uh, by the references. And uh, also an interesting study on the interaction of, uh, of uh, a toxin, fasciculin. And you see here some resemblance with the binding of toxin with the nicotinic receptor or with uh, the acetylcholine binding protein and uh, this uh, fasciculine binding outside of uh, uh, the molecule of esterase. Now, I am not finished with the list of the important discoveries of, uh, of uh, Palmer. There are two more, at least. 
one which is a very uh, fascinating uh, approach uh, that we may refer to click chemistry and which uh, was done together with Barry Sharpless, who is a very distinguished Nobel Prize winner chemist at uh, Scripps, TSRI, I should say. And the idea is to use the site of the esterase as some kind of vessel where you can bind components of, for instance, acetylcholine, acetyl, and choline, or whatever. And these uh, two components, when bound together, establish covalent clip. You can find conditions for that. And then you can build compounds uh, à la mode acetylcholine, if you uh, would say, in the sense that they are uh, compounds which are specially designed to match with the uh, acetylcholine binding sites. And this is, of course, a very elegant technique which led to the development of many compounds which now being tested. I will give one important example in a minute. And um, this was also extended to the acidic binding protein. And uh, click chemistry led to the development of many new compounds which behave as uh, agonists or antagonists uh, to the nicotinic receptor in vivo. So we are dealing with a new chemistry and a new method for designing pharmacological agents active on acetylcholine esterase and acetylcholine receptor. And among those who are acting on acetylcholine esterase, there is, uh, of course, the issue of these uh, reactivators of uh, the esterase poisoned by a nerve gas, which is, uh, uh, of course, an organophosphate, which establishes a covalent bond with a serine from the site. And there are ways to reactivate, <coughs> which uh, were discovered by uh, Wilson and Arpanza a long time ago, which are efficient, but maybe not enough to really save people. And uh, the very interesting application of the click chemistry has been to develop new compounds, new oxim, which uh, are active reactivators of uh, the poison uh, uh, acetylcholine esterase and uh, these are detoxifying agents which of course may be of help for all those intoxicated by nerve gases unfortunately in the world but also in, uh, intoxicated by uh, uh, insecticides which are safnar steel uh, some organophosphate. So, several of these compounds now are under clinical trial and very efficient, much more efficient than those which were uh, uh, synthesized before. And I will end with another and last interesting discovery that um, uh, derived from the, the beautiful uh, study of uh, Palmer and Suzanne on the sequence of acetylcholine esterase. They identified the sequence of uh, um, acetylcholine esterase and then it appeared that uh, there is a whole family of uh, proteins which have been discovered which are uh, homologues of uh, acetylcholine esterase and some of them quite far, a, a lysophosphodipase, a carboxylesterase, tireoglobuline, neuroligin, leotactin, and so on. And this is, of course, a very uh, interesting finding that uh, now we have uh, a set of homologue proteins which have all different functions, but nevertheless, common features. And uh, there are, for instance, uh, alpha-beta hydrolase fold, which are conserved, 
And mutation in this conserved region for these different proteins from the family give different diseases in humans. And uh, in particular, uh, uh, in the case of a series, some myasthenia. In the case of uh, the uh, uh, itself, these uh, myasthenic mutations, which originate from mutation in this uh, uh, homologue region present from the and other on pyroglobulin, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is, uh, of course, an interesting finding, and uh, which was again, again, Claude Bernard to localize and to see where these mutation uh, on some of these homolog proteins may cause a disease. And uh, uh, this uh, is the case of the neuroligon, I mentioned it before. And this protein is involved in the uh, relationship between the pre and post synaptic membrane. Usually there is a called synaptic cleft between to membrane, and in this cleft, in fact, there are proteins there which maintain the distance between the two membranes. And um, this uh, uh, mutation that uh, uh, Palmer and colleagues have uh, studied, particularly Tom Sudaf, Roger Sien, and Elisman, who uh, Tom Sudaf has been one of the discoverer, in fact, of uh, neuroligon. Uh, all the, these mutations can uh, cause disease, and in particular, uh, a very important disease for children, autism. Now, I will continue about autism with some work I did when I said with Palmer during the past uh, seven years, I must say, I stayed uh, two months, and I wish to thank him very much for this opportunity he gave me to be with him in his laboratory in the past uh, uh, 10 years almost. And uh, it happened that uh, in uh, Paris, uh, in our department, actually I was at the origin of the hiring of, uh, of him, Thomas Bourgeron uh, discovered the first uh, genetic genes which predispose to autism. And uh, he find uh, three genes, three important genes. It was interesting to find three genes. Then other group went on, they found three genes. Then others, ten genes. Then other ten genes. And uh, now there are more than 500 genes which are predisposing, predisposing to autism. So I must say, the uh, one gene, one protein is correct, but one gene, one disease, certainly incorrect. And uh, this is a really a discovery, uh, which is true also for uh, schizophrenia, for depression. The main mental diseases are not determined by a single gene. This is a completely wrong story. And nevertheless, you can see in many journals, say, oh, I have the discovered the gene of language. I have the discovered the gene of uh, music, of intelligence, and so on and so forth. This is just nonsense. So we have to solve this. And uh, that's uh, where uh, I had the opportunity to meet Igor Tsigelny, who had been working with uh, Balmer for years and who is a very distinguished computer scientist here. And we discussed all this and said, well, clearly the answer is that it is not one gene, uh, one phenotype, but uh, we have to deal with networks of gene interaction. And this idea was going up and Ralph Greenspan has been one of the promoters of the idea, but how do these genes interact? We had, again, to understand what is the mechanism for this interaction. And the idea that uh, uh, we developed together with uh, Igor 
is that in fact uh, these uh, genes may act interact not only between themselves, but uh, between the determinants of the expression of the gene, which is the transcription factors, which control the promoters with, of the genes, uh, the expression of these genes. So the idea which we proposed in this paper a few years ago was that not only we have a hierarchy of transcription factors and a network of transcription factors, but also here allosteric come back. It would be extremely interesting to see whether we can interfere with the expression of the genes involved, for instance, in autism, of this huge set of genes at the level of transcription factor using allosteric modulators of critical transcription factors. And this is uh, the proposal we made, which is so interesting and so speculative that until now nobody has been willing to fund this kind of research. But that's usual, as I may say. And uh, in any case, this is a very interesting idea. And uh, uh, since uh, we made this proposal, uh, Tsigelny had the, uh, Igor Tsigelny had the opportunity to work with uh, somebody working on, uh, on cancer research, uh, the Professor Cesari here in uh, UCSD, and uh, looking for uh, compound acting on transcription factor, was able to find some of these ligands which interfere with the growth uh, of uh, uh, glioma cells, and therefore it's a proof of principle that at least the method is working. So I may consider this as a, a part of the tradition of uh, Palmer Taylor to look for new pharmacology. And uh, I may say that uh, he has been an example for all of us in the pioneering this new technology and these new techniques. He had uh, about 30 students, 40 postdocs. He had a, a whole family of uh, scientists working and, uh, along this tradition and also an extraordinary career since uh, he started as a postdoc in Cambridge and Göttingen with very distinguished tutors. Then, and I want to say that uh, so we don't know about it, he has been a pioneer and together with Suzanne in founding this uh, tradition of uh, pharmacology in biochemistry at UCSD and started in 1971. Perhaps some of you were not born at that time. And um, then became associate professor and head of the division of pharmacology. Professor and chairman, he created the department of pharmacology from uh, the Department of Medicine, and then uh, became the founding dean of the SCAC School of Pharmacy. So this uh, is again a long tradition in the family. Uh, I said that uh, Claude Bernard started as a pharmacist, uh, and uh, here uh, Palmer uh, originated from a family of uh, pharmacists, and his, here is uh, Palmer Taylor Senior, uh, the father of Palmer in the, his father, uh, therefore grandfather, pharmacy, at uh, uh, the Taylor's brother drugstore, Stephen Pines, Wisconsin, here, uh, which was founded in 1896, so it's an old American tradition, if I may say. <laughs> and uh, here in 1908, and you can even see here, Taylor Drugstore. Well, you have only a few letters, but you can identify it. And uh, uh, here you can already see the gesture of 
the pharmacists in mixing compounds. And uh, here are the parents of uh, Palmer. And uh, I think it's quite sim analogies with the father. And here, <laughs> the most interesting moment in the life of, um, of Palmer. And a uh, little bit later, you can see already uh, the mathematical mind. <laughs> and then, uh, 1950, and very interesting slide where uh, uh, he's, uh, as uh, you see here, fighting in this uh, Wisconsin crew and uh, being really at the head, the first one running uh, from this um, uh, very uh, interesting team of rowers. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, was in uh, 1964, and in between 60 and 64, an interesting event happened. You can recognize the partners here. And, then, and the family started. And uh, Tasha, Tasha, and again the Palmer. You know the the word Palmer is uh, keeping transmitted epigenetically. <laughs> and uh, the second generation after, Elian, Rowan, Natalia, and I would say the many generation now of uh, non-genetic lineage, but of scientific lineage, which was uh, as I mentioned. Uh, starting very early on and uh, uh, developing particularly well with the creation of the Department of Pharmacology. And you find here uh, Palmer with uh, his uh, students and postdocs. And an important step in the administration that was under the control of, uh, of Palmer is, uh, as I said, the creation of the Department of Pharmacology, but also the creation of a building and this is one of the most visible buildings on the campus. When you get in from the south, yeah, I may say, you find uh, the school of uh, pharmacy. And um, uh, Palmer became uh, you know, the dean of the Skaggs School because of the Skaggs family. And uh, uh, became, uh, of course, uh, the dean of the school of pharmacy and pharmacy, which is one of the most important school to train pharmacists in the, in the West Coast and uh, became uh, associate vice chancellor for health science, what he is now. This is the uh, uh, establishment of the Skag School of Pharmacy. Uh, they are uh, uh, signing the last beam for the new Skag School and uh, you can find uh, uh, Claudia Skaggs in the middle here, Marianne Fox, the Chancellor, and, uh, and uh, Master Bo Holmes as the Dean, all signing this uh, foundation of the School of Pharmacy, which is working quite well. And then the time of honors had come. And, uh, in particular, because of the relationship with uh, the French scholars, we have two of them I mentioned here, and um, uh, others uh, have been in contact with Palmer. Palmer has been teaching at the Collège de France. He has been helping us very much, and for uh, all this uh, generous action, and usually the Légion d'honneur needs excellence, but more than that, it needs dedication to the society, and in particular, dedication to the French-American relationship. And uh, here he is with uh, the Légion d'honneur. He received the air, and I recognize friend, uh, Roger Guignard, and so on, and his wife, and uh, Annie Changer. And this is an important moment 
after the toast, after the Legion d'honneur was given. Now, that's not the only honor and uh, award that I have received. This is uh, one for the Asian heritage and all the strong relationship he had with uh, the Asian countries. And uh, I'm going to put all the other awards that uh, Panama received, in uh, particular the Academy of Medicine and others. And uh, I wish to say that uh, in addition to be a scholar, to be a dean, to be a tutor, he's also a friend. That's not the least part of the story. Because all these uh, relationships have been uh, very important for all of us to really do the best science with a good friend. What else do we need as scientists? You know? That's exactly what we want. And uh, I want to congratulate you, Pat Mayer, and the warmest wishes for the future. And I may last by mentioning Fernand Léger, within the framework of liberté, solidarité, and peace. Thank you very much.